that live in faith. And that's James, second chapter, 14 through 26. That live in faith. And it reads, What do it profit, my brother, though a, though a man say he have faith and have not worse? Can faith save him? 15. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food. Verse 16. And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warned, warm and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are need needful to the body. What doeth it profit? <coughs> Verse 17. Even so faith, if it has not worked, is dead, being alone. Mm. Verse 18. Ye, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. 20. Who will thou now? But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon his altar? 22. See if thou have faith wrought with his works and thy works was faith made perfect. 23, and the scripture was fulfilled with saying, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed into, unto him but righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. 24, <coughs> ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise, 25, likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. And 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Okay. That living faith. So James is a book, a, a practical book. Although it was a practical book, James was one of those books that mean that had concerns with the actual doing or the use of something rather than with theory and idea. So James had a different thought from everybody else. So and everybody looked at him because it was practical, because he was using more of I would say um, human thinking than he did more spiritual thinking. So people looked at James in a different way because if you look at how Paul, Apostle Paul was thinking and you look at how um, James was thinking, they think two different ways about how faith is supposed to work. So James is going to speak about the relationship between faith and work. And it is also necessary to work of, of a living faith. So James wants us to live out what we know. See, because a lot of times, you know, even though we say we have faith in this and we say we have faith in that, but when it's, we get in trouble, things happen. That faith goes away and we forget all about what we know because if we know that we have that living faith what happens we're still living when things happen but what happens to that living faith that we actually know about we forget all about faith we just oh we just we just lose it lose our mind we just forget about everything we don't even think god is is doing anything for us we just lose it so that's what he wants to remind us of. What happened to that living faith that y'all all know about? 
that y'all all claim to have. Y'all say y'all have faith in God. What happened to God when something happened? What happened to that faith? Where did it go? That's what James is trying to explain. Where, where did it go? So, in verse 14, when he says, what good it profit, my brethren, thou a man, though a man say he have faith? He said, we say it. That word say. We don't say we believe. We don't say we trust. We say we say we got faith. We speak in those words. So James is saying, what are you saying? What are you saying? You saying it? But what are you saying when you say it? Do you know what you're saying? That's what he's more talking about on tonight. You're talking and you're using words, but do you mean what you're saying? Do you under really understand what you're saying? Because this got kind of deep. And I, when I was reading this, I'm like, oh my God, okay. Because you never think about when we say things, we got to mean what we say. We got to know what we say. So what profit would it be to be able to quote scriptures and not live? What good is it? There's no good. We might as well be walking around dead because it means nothing. It's no life in it if you can't live. And that's what he's saying about our faith. If we can't work it, it's dead. So James is... He's looking at, at a faith of words and not a faith of works and action in life. So he's saying we are just talkers but not doers. We're just speaking and not doing what we say we're going to do. So he's looking at it in a different way. And then he also says, can that save a person? Can your faith save you only? No. And see, we think it can. Because you said, I, and, and that is what he said in that first verse. You say you have faith, but I don't see no action. I don't see you doing what you say you believe in. So if something happened, why are you falling to pieces about it? Instead of having faith that I'm going to be there to help you, I'm going to be there to pull you out of it. Where is your faith then? He said you only need the size of a mustard seed. So if you need that little bit of faith, when something happens, what happens to our faith? Where do it go? Do we not trust God? Or are we just saying we do? Do we really have faith in God? James wrote to these Christians from a Jewish background who discovered the glory of salvation by faith. Their salvation when we have faith and we work that faith and believe in that faith. There's a glory in it. But the thing of it is, a lot of people are having faith with no works. And he's letting us know that it's time to work out that faith that you say you got. It's time to show me that you believe in me. So when things happen, because things are going to happen, we are in a time now where we're going to have a new president and we don't know what we're going to get. And we got to keep the faith that God is still in charge and he's still in control. So we got to stay where we need to be in our thinking and what we're doing. And he said, we are saved by grace through faith and not by works. Faith alone. Now, but saving faith will have works that accompany it. So when we have that saving faith, that, that, that faith that says that, okay, you're saved now. You have, a, you have salvation on your side. But then you're still not working. You're still not doing it. So a lot of people think that because I got baptized, because I came down and 
I accepted Christ, that that's where it ends at. That's not where it ends at. It's an everyday process. Every day. And we we get out of the mindset that we, we're not saved just because we did that. And then that's it. And we can go out there and do anything we want to do. And, and we're still saved. I got baptized. I hear people say it all the time. I'm baptized. I'm saved. But you still club. You still drink. You do still do everything you want to do. You don't even don't even come to church. But because I got baptized, I'm still saved. That's not how it works. But everybody thinks that you're still saved just because you got baptized, and they're taking that the wrong way. And now we're at the point where we're supposed to be. Let them know it's more to our salvation than just getting baptized. It's more to our salvation than coming to church on Sunday. It's more to our salvation than reading the word and not being able to be doers of the word. Um, I was just looking at 14 there and said, what does my brother, the old man, say he has faith? And have not worked, can faith save him? Uh, I, I was trying to put that together. How can he be saved if he don't do anything for what is worth that he believes in? You know, anything that you don't believe in, you're not going to do too much with it. Right. Right. And right. so, what if you say here, you got to have, you got to believe what you say, you got to work towards it, and you got to feel it, you got to know it's there, and you got to put forth an effort. Make somebody make sure somebody else is, is aware of what you're doing so they can help along the way. We we say, well, I got faith, but if that mule out there or that car won't start, and you know, all you gotta do is say, I got faith, that's not enough. You gotta put that action is, in that. that is not enough. And without the action, you ain't gonna have nothing going but just time. And that is exactly what he's saying. Our works should exemplify our faith. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have anything to show, then there's no faith. Because people can't, faith is something that you can't see. Your works is what people see and know is whether you got faith. So we we working on telling people, oh, I, I got the faith. But they looking at you and saying, well, I don't see it. Because you're not doing anything. So if they asked you what, um, show me or show me some proof of your faith, what would you say? I just know I got faith. No. With no works. Yeah, you don't have anything to do. But show when me. we look at that next verse and if a brother or sister be naked and they and destitute of daily food, you see him in distress, you see you need it. You should be able and willing to give him what he needs in order to make right. it. Food to survive. Clothes if he needs to stay warm. We should be willing to share. It didn't say you had to go out there and slave for him, but it said, you know, you willing, ought to be willing to do something to help him if you got plenty. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have nothing yourself, help him and get some also. Right. Can we do it? They have a plan. That's what not a plan, but anyway, <laughs> they got I think it's really important that we understand the works, the yes. works concept. What are the works? You know, you gotta serve other people. As you, as he was talking about the naked man, yeah. you know, when you clothe a naked man, you're doing things, you serve, you're helping somebody. You know, instead of sitting at home in the house, you gotta get out and work and serve. So we ain't got to that, but we will get to that now. So James is talking about a brother or sister who is naked and do not have daily food. So James says that we need to help those that are naked. We need to care. We need to give them when they don't have. We need to show them our compassion for them. We need to be there for them. But what he says is, so if we say a person be warmed and filled, and we know that they need, and we do nothing but and but throw at them a few religious words, how is that helping them? Right. And one thing, Sister Teacher, 
sometimes you know, we talk about who need help or what somebody don't have, but we don't do anything but talk about it. Yeah, we got to get out of social and, action. And that is what he's Sir. saying. You will just talk, and we can lead somebody somewhere and say, well, sister so-and-so, she's a good person, and she helps people. <laughs> but what about you? You sent them there because you know this. Just like he said, you know God's word, so you can give me God's word. But you are you living God's word because you're telling it to me, but you're not giving it, using it yourself? Don't worry about that. If I'm going to give them to God's word, it ain't going to help me at all. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's what he's saying, that we, we just give him words, and mm -hmm. the person is in need. Right. And we need to change that because when we say we have faith in God, we got to have faith in God in that aspect that God has given us what we need to be able to help somebody else. So we have to have faith that God is going to supply our needs and we give it to somebody else. Amen. See, that, that's what he's trying to say. So when we when we sit there and act like we, don't, we can't give anybody anything, what kind of faith is that? That we don't believe that God will supply our needs and give us back. That he don't give us in abundance. That, that, we, that we bless somebody else and he's not going to bless us. Bless somebody else. No. I mean, I, and he said faith without works is dead. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And one of the greatest examples is him talking about Abraham. You have that personal relationship with God. Where he, where he um, supplies all your needs, but at the same time, you've got to help somebody else too. Mm -hmm. it's, it's action. The, the right. whole thing is talking right. about action. You've got to have action with your faith. Amen. And as you see, it all works together. It's faith and it works. Because if you've got faith, you know, you can see a difference in people. They'll start showing you that works. It's going to happen, it's going to come out of you. It's true. And when it said, what does it profit? Real faith is not made of only spiritual things. See, we want to take the spiritual part and we want to be so spiritual that we forget that people actually need help because we so, we so say and we so, we know all everything, but what about the ones that's not there yet? And they asking us, and we so saved that we just give them religion, but we ain't giving them nothing else in their place of it. Amen. And our Amen. real faith will not only be the demonstrated by our prayer life, Bible reading, mm -hmm. habits, church attendance, but by our practical caring, assisting yes. those in need. Amen. Giving them comfort, covering them, and giving them food. We have forgotten that that is part of our faith. And God is looking at us as faithful children to help somebody else, to care about somebody else, to do for somebody else. And we just say, well, we have faith in God. But God is looking at us and saying, are you showing me your faith by your actions? Or are you showing me your faith just by words? You learn in scripture. You learn about the Bible but you're not using it. To my need, that's no good. Because you're still not helping anybody. It's okay to have it. I mean, because, uh, hey, a lot of people know scripture. I see people that don't even go to church know scripture. But, hey. <laughs> and, and to kind of help you out on that one, you said if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit you? And what I'm saying is, if just to tell somebody, you know, you be warm and everything be all right. <laughs> uh, and then you say, Well, I go to church on Sunday. I preach, I do all this, but that's not doing what God asks you. Amen. Amen. Can I ask you that? One thing about God blesses us with so many resources. 
It's money, everything, right? But sometimes we want to keep our money in our pockets yes, instead right. of sharing and helping other people. Amen. That we can share because God blessed us to bless others. Yes, exactly. So we got to share our resources, which can be money. Clothes could be anything. But we need to share what we got. Amen. And so uh, this man named Adam Clark, I was reading, and what he said was, you're pretending to have faith while you have no works of charity or mercy and is utterly vain. For as faith, which is a principle in the mind, cannot be discerned by but by the efforts that is good works has who has who has no good works has presumptively no faith so all of that saying is that all you you pretended to have it because you say you got it but it's not showing and that's what a lot of people are looking at other people now saying. They they say they're Christian, but I never see them help anybody. They say they got faith in God, but they never do nothing for anybody else. They want to give a helping hand, and they always leave them to somebody else. But every now and then, I say, can you open up your hand. Can you help? Amen. I, then I believe that you got faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, faith, it said if you had faith the size of a mustard seed. And we know that faith is very, very small. But our faith grows. But if, as you say, sometimes our faith fails us, but when we uh, just trust God and it comes through, they should build our faith. And it should get, what I think about, when I think about, when I look at what he did for the children of Israel when they crossed the Red Sea and, and, and all the other things that he did, but now I don't have to look at that to draw on because I've got enough in my own life that I can be a witness to. And I know who God is. And when I had to totally depend on him, it would do nothing. So that when you go through things in life, if you trust God, that faith would get. It's supposed to build us up, but some people are not there. And that is the most important part of our teaching and our understanding is that we know everybody's not on the same level. And, and, and we, God has us on the gauge to where he wants us to be. So our faith is on our works and what we are doing for God. Not for man, not for other people, but for God that he builds us up. He exalts us and he do what we need him to do for us because we are doing what he asked us to do. So it makes a difference when people say that they have faith. They understand what faith is all about, but yet it's still, there is no action. And we can say that on Sundays because we, we see people all the time in different churches, any way you visit, same people come in and they take a seat and they enjoy service and they go home and they don't never do anything. And you and it's not for us to know, only God to know, but in our minds, if we was to have to say anything, would you think that was faith? Because it's, it's just like a routine? Those are the things that people look at and see because we can't see their faith. We can't see their hearts, only God can. So therefore, we don't know, we can only see the actions and what they do and their works. Yeah, uh, I, I think that uh, we, we sometimes get hung up on the tangible things, mm -hmm. but there are a whole lot of intangible things that you can do to show your faith and your deeds. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't always see them. So, you know, the tangible things you see, like money, food, whatever, but there's a 
lot of intangibles that uh, people do, things that people do that, you know, impact us. That's right. That's true. That's true. I, I, I agree with that because I, I was thinking as she was talking to when you see a person that's on their sick bed and they still trust in God and they saying, I know he did, if he don't heal me, I know he can and they get you that faith. So that, that is a personal relationship with God. Amen. So James 17, even, even so faith, if it has not worked, is dead and being alone. Now James speaking of dead faith here, this is now we was talking about living faith, but now we we're gonna go into um, intertwining with both the living and the dead because we know that faith or grace alone saves us, and we receive that faith through Jesus Christ. So our faith is built on our trust and belief in Jesus, not in man. Because we trust man sometimes more than we even trust God. Mm -hmm. We put more faith in man than we do God. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and so we got to understand God is helping man. Right. So why are you trusting man before you trust God? Instead of trusting God, the man is going to do what God has him to do. See, we're doing this thing backwards. Right. We're doing it backwards. Right. But we got to get in touch with God first right. for our faith Amen. that he builds us up. And then go to man. And it says faith alone saves us, but it's, it must be a living faith. Mm -hmm. And we can see that faith is alive by seeing the works accompanied by it. And if we really think of think something is real, we will follow through and act upon it. And that's why I say about man, that we see them and see how they're acting. And you know how we get attached to people, things, and situations where we like or we think that, oh, we doing something. And we draw out, we go up and over there, we go near to them. Forget about where we at, and we cling to them. We put more faith in them than we is in God. Because we fall in them. We fall in their behavior. And they may not even be doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we still attach to them. We're going to attach ourselves to them. And that's what James is saying. We got to stop attaching ourselves to people and the things that they're doing, the worldly things, and start attaching ourselves to the things of God. Mm -hmm. And Amen. it is faith that looks not to self but to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See, our faith, we have our faith in ourselves that we can do things, that we can heal our own selves, that we can um, we can go to the doctor and buy medicine and we're going to be all right. And we don't go to God. We, we, we think we can do it on our own. Everything we do, even with our children, we think we can heal our children instead of going to God for healing. And we, we take our, the faith away from even letting them know that they need a connection with God. They need to pray for themselves. They need to pray for their healing. A lot of, a lot of young people don't know how to pray for their healing because nobody has taught them that. You got to do it for yourself. You got to get an understanding for yourself, just like we did. But eventually that will come. And we know that we didn't just jump into it. It just didn't happen. It took some years, but eventually it will happen. But it's got to be taught. It has to be taught. Yes. And it's faith that agrees with God's word. See, if faith, our faith don't line up with God's word, what is it? Yes. If we don't do what God wants us to do and it ain't lining up, what is the purpose for what we're doing if, we don't, if it's not lining up with God? Amen. It is faith that in itself is not a work that deserves reward from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want reward. Mm -hmm. Oh, I come to church, I got to get to God. But you wait for a paycheck, or you wait for somebody to need something. That's not what you should be waiting on. 
you just should be trusting that God is going to take care of you, supply all your needs. So it's not about coming to church and getting rewarded or coming in thinking that you're going to get something and take it home <clears throat> just because you come to church. Right. And we know a lot of churches do that, though. They kind of bribe the kids and bribe the people that come to church. They have a lot of dinners, a lot of different things going on just so they can have attendance. That's not the reward that God wants to give them. Yeah, like he wants them to be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He want, he want them to be saved, yeah. And, not, mm. and it is faith that, that's grounded in what Jesus did on the cross and by the empty tomb. See, Jesus didn't die that we not have faith. He died that we would have faith. Faith in him that he rose on the third day with all power in his hand. Trust and believe that he did that on that day for us. He didn't have to do that for himself. He did that for us. But a lot of people don't have that faith. They, don't, they still don't believe. It is faith that will naturally be expressed and repentance and good works. And I was I was um thinking about when I when I read that when we when we discussed on Sunday about forgiveness. Forgiveness is good, but without repentance, it's no good. Because that means that without repentance, you ain't you don't want to be forgiven. You got to come with repentance in your heart. It goes together. Because we won't ask God to forgive us, but we don't want to repent for what we did. Because we assume that God already knows. And see, that's the thing about people is that, yeah, God knows, but he still wants you to repent for it. Amen. That's right. And it is faith that saves more than Lord, Lord, as in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Because... <coughs> We are at the point now that that's what we're saying and that's what we're doing. Lord, Lord, look what I did. Lord, Lord, I come to church. Lord, Lord, I'm singing in the choir. Lord, that's not enough. That, that's not faith. That's a gift that he's given you that you're able to do or perform. That's what you want to do on your spare time. But that don't say that you believe in God. You might like the song. You might want to give them this praise God. But you might not have no faith in what you're doing. You just want to do something. It's a difference. It is faith that not only hears the word of God, but does. As it is in Matthew 7, 24 through 27. See, we just want to be hearers. We come in and we're here. But when we go out, we do the same thing came in. And we'll come back and we'll do the same thing. It's just like a routine. We don't, we don't never stop doing what we're doing. Amen. Amen. Verse 18 and 19. Yea, a man may say, thou, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devil also believes and trembles. And see, that is what people don't understand. The, the devil knows too. And he and he was there before we were. So he already know how to respond. And he already know what to do. So when you say you have faith, he's gonna try it. He gonna attempt it. Mm -hmm. And he's going to see, do you still have that faith? Mm -hmm. As he did Job, and so many more. Mm -hmm. To see, where is that faith? That's right. Yeah. You get a little sick, where's that faith? Your family gets sick, where's that faith? Mm -hmm. Something happened to your children, where's that faith? What happened? Are you going to act up because something happened? Or are you going to trust God that they're going to get well? You're going to trust God that you're not going to stay sick long. You're going to trust God that no matter what disease falls on you, that you can be delivered from it. You're going to trust God that if you need some food, that he's going to provide or he's going to send somebody. 
-hmm. If that's the faith that God wants us to have, mm -hmm. are you going to trust that I'm going to do it regardless of what's going on? Mm -hmm. Are you going to not turn your back on me? Are you going to continue to come to church and praise me in the midst of what you're going through? Are you going to keep that faith going long enough to say, God, I trust you wholeheartedly? Amen. Not Amen. part way, Amen. not halfway, but I trust you all the way. Right. That's what James is saying. Mm -hmm. We need to trust God all the way. All the way. Give him everything that we got, mm -hmm. and then some of we have. James points out the idea that someone may not agree with what is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And we know that we all have different gauges and we may have words and we may have faith, but that's not how it works, see, because people are saying, okay, because I'm over here working. That means that I have faith, but then you got somebody over here that have faith and not work. And they say they got faith. He said, no, that ain't how it work. You gotta have both. You gotta have faith and work. So, he said, but that's not how it works. Real faith is going to be de demonstrated through works. So you gotta have both. You can't have one over here saying I got work and one over here saying I got faith. Mm -hmm. Nah, this gotta come together. Amen. That's right. We got to see it. Amen. So think about it. Can we see faith? No. Can we see it? No. So we can only see faith in our works.
Abraham had that living faith that he let his son almost die. He didn't, he didn't die because he was spared his life, but he was going to give up his son. He was willing to do that, to prove his faith. That's real faith. And real faith is when we do something. Living faith <clears throat> is when we do something. The lesson that we learn from Abraham is if we believe God will do what he tells us to do and be obedient, do we believe? So if we believe we're going to do it right, we're not going to hesitate. We're not even going to think about it twice if God tells us to do it right. If we believe in God, we're going to go ahead and do what God tells us to do. Our lesson for Rahab is that if we believe in God and when we help his people, even when it costs us something, will we, will we have a passion for other people? Will we help other people? Even, even though it may cost us. Right. Even if you had somewhere else to go. And you was in a hair, and somebody asked you for a ride. Will you be willing to help him? Or will you say, no, I gotta go? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's just that deep because somebody else's situation might have been more important at that particular time than your situation. But because of who we are, <clears throat> sometimes God expects for us, and that's a test. And we are always being tested on every side to will we do what we normally would not do right. at a certain time. Exactly. Just and, like you talk about Abraham. Yeah. Sacrifice the right? Yes. Yeah. So it, it gets that deep. And that's what we got to know when we say we have faith in God. Do we really have faith in God? Do we really trust him with all our hearts? That is what James wants to know. It is so deep. What he's saying is so deep. And he wants us to really think about when we say we have faith in God, what are we doing to show that we really have faith in God? We are living in a time now where people really need to know who is and who ain't. And they're looking at us and they're studying us like we the Bible. Amen. And if you're not getting it right, they ain't scared to call it out. I see you this day. Times are changing. People are really looking for somebody to talk to, somebody to introduce them to who God really is who Jesus is, you you get more um, people coming, wanting to know what it means to have faith, to be saved. Mm -hmm. And we are that example. And if we can't live it, what good is it? I feel like we get, excuse me, I feel like we get tested to see what kind of faith we got. Exactly. Just like Abraham. Exactly. Sacrifice and sin. So we get tested throughout our lives to see what type of faith we God wants to know where we are. Exactly. We need to know where we are ourselves. Ourselves, that's exactly right. God knows where we are. And verse 26, and I say you have a forward, it says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Mm -hmm. So a body without the spirit is what? Dead. It's a corpse, right? That's dead. So, <laughs> so what Paul was talking about is that real faith. What James is talking about is that dead faith. And they both will agree that real faith, living faith, will be demonstrated by actions. 
So a lot of us are walking around with no spirit, but we say we have faith, and we walk around like the dead. You, you, and we don't have anything, no life in us. And people is looking for us to have life that they can see that shine. They can see how you live it and really is living. Even though we don't have to prove ourselves to anybody, but they still want to see God in us. And we're going to be a representation of who God is. They need to know that we are in the right place. That is my lesson for tonight. That living faith. Let us live and be an example to God wants us to be. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we just come to you, Father. Father God, thank you, Father God, for that living faith, Father God. Yeah. Father God, that we can trust and we can depend on you, Father God, and not lean to our own understanding, yeah. Father God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for safe traveling mercies here, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, that when we go home, Father God, everything will be decent and in order on tonight, mm -hmm. Father God. Father God, we lift up once again those that are sick, Father God. We lift up, Father God, those that are in mourning on this evening, yeah. Father God. And Father God, we ask you, Father God, that you will continue, Father God, to increase it and give us that which we need, Father God, as we grow in your love, Father God, and your understanding, Father God. Bless everyone that came out on tonight, mm -hmm. Father God. And we just give you all the praise and all the honor. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Amen.